Money flow index is a unique indicator because it combines price and volume. And as algo traders, we are always looking for a unique angle to build strategies that are profitable. In this video, I will show you how the money flow index works and then I will beat the crap out of it by taking it through my algo versus crap workflow. Now this workflow basically tortures any indicators by taking it through multiple markets, multiple speeds. Basically it builds about 3000 strategies with about 200,000 trades on multiple markets in order to see if it carries any edge on any market. Also, since it is a repeatable workflow, it is great to compare other indicators to each other. I created the Algo versus Crap series in order to have a workflow, a repeatable workflow to test any indicator. So as we can compare it to other indicators because we are using the same base. This is to combat the BS videos on YouTube that usually test an indicator for 100 trades on five minutes and then compare it on 100 trades with the daily time frame and so on and so forth, which is of course uh, doesn't work that way. So in this video, we are not building a certain strategy. If you want that, then I have a video on the channel that use money flow index to build a strategy. Instead, in this video, we are looking for the edge of this indicator compared to other indicators that I tested on the Algo versus Crab series. The money flow index, also known as the money flow indicator, is a momentum indicator that use both price and volume to gauge the buying and selling pressure. It's often compared to the RSI, and since the RSI uses only price, this one is called volume weighted RSI because it adds volume to it. Basically, it is plotted as an oscillator that ranges from zero to 100, and that's why it's compared to the RSI. And typically it's used if the value is above 80, then it is overbought, and if it's below 20, then it's oversold. This is how we calculate the money flow index. Now this looks complicated, but really it's easy. First, we need to calculate the typical price. The typical price is the high plus low plus close divided by three. Now in most trading platforms, this is already available as typical price. Now, once you have the typical price, you multiply it by the volume of that day. And then we need to add the buying pressure and the selling pressure. So if the current typical price is higher than the previous typical price, we call that as positive money flow. And if the current typical price is lower than the previous typical price, we call that as negative money flow. And once we label those, we can easily add them based on the look back period. So for example, here, the look back period is 14. So basically we sum all the positive money flow for the past 14 periods. And we divide that by the sum of all negative money flow in the past 14 periods. Now, once we have this money flow ratio, we need to make it an oscillator. And to make it an oscillator, basically this equation works for any indicator that you want to flip it into an oscillator. So it's 100 minus 100 divided by one plus the value. In this case, it is the money flow ratio. Just to let you know that this equation is not for money flow index. It's again to flip any value into an oscillator. And this is how it looks like on the chart. So again, it's like the RSI. It has an overbought zone, oversold zone. So far, so good. We have the indicator equation defined and we know how it works. It's an oscillator. Now let's take it through the algo versus crap workflow. So let me take you through the setup of the algo versus crap. First, we start with the data history. For all the indicators we are testing, we are starting from 2007 or 2006, depending on the market, all the way to the current date in 2024. Now, the reason we're starting from 2006 or seven, depending on the market, is because all futures markets switch to electronic trading uh, starting in 2007, some of them in 2006. Also, we have the 2008 market crash for a year, which is very good to have in our data. Plus we have other market crashes, small market crashes like the COVID or 2011 or 2015 flash crash and so on and so forth. Once we set up the data history, 
we need to tune the indicator to produce certain speed. Now we achieve that by changing the look back period and the level. So remember here we have a look back period and a level to buy and sell. So for example, I may change the look back to say the MFI index look back of nine and the level, let's start with 20 and see how many trades that produce. I want to tune that to produce four level of speeds. So first level is the very slow speed, which is about 100 trades. Then we go to slow speed, about 200 trades. And then the normal speed, about 300 trades. And then the fast speed, which produce more than 400 trades. The reason to align the speeds of the indicator, so as we can easily compare it to other indicators. Because if you choose RSI 2 and choose MFI 20, well, the RSI 2 will produce about 500 trades and then the MFI 20 will produce, let's say, 60 trades. So we are not comparing apples to apples. So what I'm trying to do here is de reduce the discrepancy as much as possible so we can easily say this indicator is better or worse than the other indicator. Once we define the speed, then we set up our markets. Now I have 65 futures markets in seven categories, agriculture, crypto, currency, energy, equity, meats, and so on. Now, out of those 65, I have 11 markets that has two data sets. One, it's the daily session and one is the 24 hours session. And out of the 65, I have 12 micro futures for the same market. So all in all, I have 42 unique markets. Once we set up the markets, we go to the style. So we will use mirror version and breakout. So basically what that means, if we are using the indicator as a mirror version, then we will wait for it to enter the oversold zone. So this is here. And then we will buy the market, hoping it will go up. And the same way in mirror version, if it's in the overbought zone, then we will short the market here, hoping it will go down. Now, the same indicator can be used as a breakout indicator. So in the case of breakout indicator, we will wait for it to go in the oversold zone and sell it, waiting for it to go further down. And again, we will wait for it to go in the overbought zone, and then we will buy it in the hope that it will go up. Once we set up our style, we set the direction because we are testing long separately than short. This is an important point and really you can apply it to all your strategy building. It's much better to build long separately than short because most markets, in fact, all markets behave differently on the long side and on the short side using a short term period. So if your strategy is entering and exiting within seven days that's very short term and especially of course intraday and usually in short term periods the long behaves uh, totally different than the short and then we have the exits so we have three defined exits in this workflow the first one is to exit end of day that means we enter on the session open and we exit on the session close the next one is we enter on the session open, we exit after four bars. We are using daily bars, so that's four days. And the last one, we use a profit target and a stop loss. So the profit target is two times the ATR, the average true range of 20 bars ago. And the stop loss is using four times the average true range of 20 bars. The reason they are fixed at two and four, it's not to produce the best profit is so as these two don't overlap in the same day. ATR basically telling us what's the distance the market travels every day. So the average ATR for the past 20 bars, that's the average distance that the market will move up and down every day. So the profit target is two ATR. That means we want the market to move twice the average movement of every day. And that's the profit target. So the profit target is two above. And then the stop loss is four ATRs below. So we expect the market to move four times the average move per day. That's why they are six ATR apart. So it's 
highly unlikely that they will execute the same day. Now, of course, it could happen, but it's highly, highly unlikely that the market will move 680 hours and hit both targets on the same bar. The reason we don't want any overlap because we are testing on daily bars and we don't know which one is going to hit first. So this is the Algo versus Crop total setup. We set up the historical bars and then we tune the indicator for speeds. We set up our markets. We add two styles, two directions and three exits. Now that we have that set up, we can optimize all these variables. So we optimize for four speeds, two styles, two directions, three exits, 65 markets. That will produce roughly around 3,100 strategies and roughly around 200,000 trades. Now I say roughly because the remember the tuning of the speeds, it's not exact, let's say 100 trades. So it could be 110 or 140 or 95. Same thing goes for the 200, 300, 400 and so on and so forth. Also, not all markets have the same data. So some markets start in 2006, some in 2007. And I have three markets that starts in 2012 because the previous markets due to the adjustment of the futures, they are all in negative territory. So once we finish the optimization on all these markets for a certain indicator, that will take a while to do. Then we will reach a database of strategies. Remember, we will get about 3,100 strategies per indicator. Then we will test them for robustness. Now, the robustness here is not the same as when you are testing a normal strategy. These strategies are only to find an edge. Remember, they don't have a filter. The exit is fixed. And even the tuning of the indicator is fixed. Like it's fixed to produce 100 trades on the slow speed, not on the best strategy. So you see, we are not targeting the best strategy. We are just targeting a number of trades per speed. And therefore the robustness is basically extremely simple. We just want a low positive average trade and a high return to drawdown ratio. Now, of course, this can be changed as you like, but for my Algo versus Crab series, I picked those again so as to compare all indicators on the same basis. And as you see in this workflow, the strategies that doesn't pass the robustness test will go in the database, in the general database, where I keep all strategies tested. And then the robust strategies will go in the filtered database. So you set up everything here and you end up with a number of filtered strategies in the database. This is how the total database looks like. And of course I collect a lot more information in case I need it in the future. And as we can see so far, I tested 23 indicators and we have 72,000 plus strategies with about 14 and a half million trades. And you see we are split in the middle between mere reversion and breakout and we have the three exit. Now you can filter on any of these, but remember these are the total strategies. And what we want is the filtered strategies. So these are the filtered strategy. So we go from 72,000 strategies to about 3,000 strategies. So only 3,000 pass the robustness test uh, as most strategies don't have any edge. The total number of trades went from 14 and a half million to about half a million trades. Now, so far, these are the indicators that I tested. Now, since all indicators are tested using the same workflow, trying to produce the same speeds, using the same filter for robustness. So it's very easy now to compare which indicator is the best by just counting how many robust strategies pass the filter. And this is the number of strategies that pass the filter for every indicator. And these are the rankings. Of course, we can sort by the rankings. And as you can see, even though this was tested a while ago, my ultimate KCC percent indicator is still one of the best producing 198 robust strategies. These strategies, again, they are not full strategies. They are just strategies with an edge. The second best so far is the Connors RSI followed by Williams R 
which I think is the last one I tested about a couple of months ago. The current indicator we are testing, the money flow sits at number 13 with 121 strategies past the workflow. So let's filter on the indicator and see what we get. So let's go money flow, this one. So we have 121 strategies. These strategies are split 77, mean reversion and 44 breakout. 50 long, 71 short, and these are the exits. So usually I sort by the market to see uh, how many strategies we get per market. So look at this. For example here, the British pound, six strategies with an edge on the British pound. And you can see that soybean is only one and Australian dollar is only one. So obviously this indicator works really well on British pound. And if we scroll to the right, so these are all short mean reversion strategy. So not only we get a better idea of how this indicator is behaving compared to the other indicators, because then we can start with the top best indicators instead of starting with the worst indicator. But also we can dig down and see how each indicator is behaving on every market. And of course they don't behave on every market the same way. So like I show you in this example, the bridge pound works very well with money flow index, mere reversion, short side, while the Australian dollar or soybeans producing only a single strategy, which just tells me that there is no edge there, even though I have this single strategy. Now, if we go down, we see that all indexes behaves really well with basically any mere reversion long strategy. I've been talking about this edge since I started this YouTube channel. And of course, it's been known for a decade now. But really, the past five years, my most profits came from mean reversion long on the indexes. And the reason is very simple. You can see that like they work really well with any indicator on mean reversion long side. Also interesting here, we have a breakout strategy on Ethereum on the short side. And again, that's another edge that is very well known, which is natural gas, mere reversion short. You can see it here, and this is the E-mini natural gas, again, mere reversion short. Although here, we have some breakouts also working, and that is also interesting. Of course, once you have this data, this is highly, highly valuable, and you can extract many information from it. You can build pivot charts on it. This is, for example, the number of robust strategies per indicator using the pivot chart. You can easily change that. For example, we can put the average trade. And as you can see, the stochastic producing the best average trade, even though it's number 21 on our list in terms of the number of robust strategies. For this kind of information, because it's very simple, I already built it here. So these are the average of everything. So for example, this is the average trade and I can sort on average trade and you can see 725 is the stochastic. And of course you can sort on win rate. So the best win rate is the KCC percent. The best profit factor is the ROC and so on and so forth. The information in this database is highly, highly valuable because you can see you can extract many things out of it and start from there. The point here is this is your starting point to go and build your strategy. Now, of course, I don't expect you to have this database immediately. This takes time to build uh, and uh, accumulate. But really, once you get the hang of it, then you can easily add more to these databases. And that will be the start of your uh, strategy building process. There is also another way which I teach in the Algo Trading Masterclass. It's called Market Edge. That's also an easier way to start building a strategy. Basically, you find what is the market edge and you start from that building block as the start of your strategy building. To learn more about Algo versus Craft series, watch this video and I will see you there.